Okay, so I've been running my little inverter experiment for a couple of months now, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a quick reminder. This is our roof, and up until a couple of months ago, we had a perfectly east-west facing array. So this is our east array, this is our west array. And we had two triangles of uh, south-facing roof here that we could use for extra panels. So what I wanted to do was get some more panels installed, but I also wanted to run an experiment comparing a string inverter against microinverters. So for the three panels on this part of the roof here, we hooked those up to a string inverter, a small 1.5 kilowatt Fox ESS string inverter. And on these three panels here, we added microinverters, the uh, the N phase microinverters rated at 380 watts. The panels themselves are 460 watts. So part of the experiment was to see whether uh, the microinverters would do better overall compared to the string inverter, or if the string inverter would do better than the microinverters, depending on the uh, conditions. Because obviously we get a little bit of shading from the ridge line of the roof here. Um, once you get to about nine o'clock in the morning, certainly in the summer, the, uh, the shading's all gone. So for the vast majority of the day, um, there's no shading on any of these panels, but the shading is symmetric east and west. So what I wanted to do was te test an unoptimized uh, string uh, array versus obviously optimized microinverters um, just to see what the comparison was in a real world example obviously I know that there have been other experiments comparing them in test conditions and, and everything else the suggestion is the microinverter should do about five to ten percent better than a string inverter uh, part of this experiment is to see whether that's true in the real world and obviously whether it's worth the extra cost of the microinverters and to be sure I'm being as fair as possible between the two systems, I'm using an independent energy monitor. I'm using a Shelly device to uh, monitor the output from both these two arrays just to make sure that there's an independent measurement uh, in a consistent way so that we're, we're not relying on the individual systems themselves to report what energy they're generating. So hopefully that means that we're being absolutely as fair as we can be. And one thing that I should probably clarify is that I chose not to add optimizers to any of these panels on the string inverter because the level of shading is very low and I didn't want to add any more onto the roof than was strictly necessary because obviously these things can fail and I would rather keep it as simple as possible on the roof and if I didn't need to add optimizers then there'd be no point um, doing so. Um, what I'm interested in doing in a future experiment is adding optimizers to these after the full year of the initial experiment is over to see how much of a difference it would actually make and then obviously we'll have a uh, another comparison that we can do between an optimized string array versus um, obviously the microinverters which are naturally optimized in and of themselves. So yeah, uh, with any luck in a year's time, I if I get the opportunity, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, we shall see. Um, but uh, for now, these are unoptimized un panels versus um, the microinverters. Let's say after a full year's worth of data, I'm gonna do a full roundup of um, all of the results uh, and including a cost analysis. So uh, keep, uh, keep your eyes peeled for that video in a few months time. Uh, this is the second month I've done this um, and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm probably going to skip uh, the next few months and then do a roundup at six months and then another roundup at 12 months um, just because you know the data is going to be pretty similar for a lot of that time. Uh, and uh, in the meantime what I'm going to do is um, add the results from these two arrays to the uh, my existing results that I tend to do once a month. So if you're interested in keeping track of it month to month then go and check out my normal monthly stats videos. If you're interested in the setup for this experiment, all of the specs for the equipment and everything else, I've got a playlist of videos that I'll link down in the description and above my head right now, so go and check that out. And let's get on to the results, but before we get to that, here's a quick word from our sponsor. This string versus microinverter experiment is being supported by Green Team One, the solar installers who put the new system in place for me. If you're in the Gloucestershire or surrounding counties and would like a solar or battery system, Give these guys a ring or check out their website linked in the description and let them know that I sent you. Right, so this chart shows the daily generation from the two arrays in kilowatt hours running from the 1st of March 2025 through to the 30th of April. And you can see that generally speaking, the microinverters, the N phase array here, is doing very slightly better um, on most days. And in fact, I can say that over the course of these two months, the N phase microinverters have performed 5.5% better than the string inverter. So you can see here that the total generation for these two months from the string inverter is 330.6 kilowatt hours, whereas it's 348.7 kilowatt hours for the microinverters. And showing that data in a slightly different way, this chart shows the ratio between the two systems. So each dot represents one day's worth of generation. And what I've done is I've taken the generation from the N phase microinverters and divided it by the Fox ESS string inverter to give the 
position on the y-axis here. And where the value is 1, that means that generation was equal for the two arrays on that day. When it's above the line, that's the microinverters doing slightly better. And you can see that the average line here in orange shows the microinverters are doing, on average, 5.5% better than the string inverter. And it's pretty consistent, actually, for a good chunk of the um, overall generation. So on the x-axis here, this is the generation of the Fox string inverter um, array. And um, obviously, when it's sunny, we, we're up at this end. And when it's cloudy or miserable, we're down at this end. And there's some hint that um, potentially this ratio could creep up. But obviously, at the moment, we're generating way up here. So we have much more data in this part of the chart compared to the low end. Once we get into the winter, this chart, this end of the chart will fill out. So it'll be interesting to see if this really does continue to go up or if this was a just a freak accident based on the weather on that particular day. Um, yeah, so um, I'm curious to see how this progresses over time. My hypothesis was that this end was actually going to um, be below the line here because obviously the microinverters have a lower output rating than the arrays themselves. And what I wanted to see was whether or not that clipping that we get on the microinverters would actually pull the generation down. But some interesting things have been happening. So let me show you a couple of other charts. And um, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit confused. So I could do with a little bit of help, perhaps. This is a screenshot of the Enphase Enlighten app that you can use to monitor your uh, output from your microinverters. And I've chosen the 7th of April here because it was a nice unbroken sunny day. And you can see obviously the uh, um, generation increases up to a point and then it maxes out at this level here because the um, microinverters um, can obviously only generate 380 watts and the panels are 460 watts. So the panels would should generate a little bit more and uh, come up about this sort of level, but obviously it's being capped by the microinverters themselves. Um, they've got a really weird scale here. I don't know why they don't do it in power. Um, this would have been much more useful to have been in kilowatts rather than kilowatt hours because they've broken it down into quarter hour chunks, um, which, okay, fine, but um, that's not super helpful uh, from my perspective. I would rather see this in power and then have uh, the energy shown in a different chart, but um, there you go. But what I can tell you is that this level here is exactly three times 380 watts. So that's about 1.14 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, this is exactly what you would expect. Um, now with the string inverter, what I would expect is the uh, this profile to look somewhat different. It should continue up in a nice smooth curve and then obviously drop down the other side as the sun drops for lower in the sky. However, that's not quite what we see. Now this is the equivalent chart for the same day from the Fox ESS app and you can see that we've got uh, power up the side here which is what I like to see. Once again 7th of April and we get the same sort of um, increase up to a point here but where I thought that we should get a nice smooth curve around the top we're also seeing a very strange sort of cap here. Now this very much looks like we're also experiencing clipping with the inverter. Um, however the inverter should go as high as 1.5 kilowatts. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that this level here is almost exactly the same as the level of the clipping experienced by the microinverters. It's about 1.12 kilowatts, something like that. On um, different days, this um, cap seems to be a bit uh, slightly higher or slightly lower, but I'm consistently seeing this, this weird flat top here. Uh, now, I have a couple of hypotheses uh, around why this is doing this. Um, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, my first thought was, I wonder if there's some sort of interference between the two systems, because it was very suspicious that it was at very, almost exactly the same level of clipping on both systems. Now I thought, well, okay, a good way to test this would be if I can turn off the microinverters for you know, 10, 20 minutes, and also my existing array, because what I thought was maybe the fact that all three arrays are generating, when we've got a nice sunny day, potentially we're actually hitting the limit of what uh, what voltage we can actually pump back out to the grid. Uh, and maybe we're getting to the point where this uh, particular inverter is choosing to curtail its own generation so that the um, the voltage doesn't breach the sort of the typical, um, I think it's 253 volts is um, is the maximum that uh, that we're allowed in the UK. Uh, so what I what I did was I turned off both of the other two systems, my existing east-west array and the Enphase microinverter array, 
but nothing seemed to change. Um, I still had uh, the exact same level of generation from the uh, the Fox CSS string inverter. So I was a bit confused by that. Um, I then had another, well, uh, I asked my installers to see what they thought about the situation and they suggested potentially it was uh, the temperature of the panels um, getting high enough that it was actually reducing the output of, uh, of those uh, particular panels. Um, now, I, I'm not convinced by that argument, um, firstly because if it is re related to temperature, I would expect a much smoother profile. It you, we wouldn't see this quite dramatic uh, cut off here. I would expect it to be a, a bit more smooth and round at the top there. Um, and also, for this level of curtailment, um, I did a back of the envelope calculation and I worked out that the panels would have to be somewhere in the region of 91 degrees centigrade for that level of, uh, of clipping to happen, which I think is probably a bit unrealistic, certainly for um, early April. Um, however, I, you know, I'm willing to accept that maybe that's potentially the case. Um, but uh, I, if that was the case, I would also expect the, uh, the Enphase microinverters to suffer in the same way. And on a particularly sunny day, when I do see this level dropping a little bit below the 1.14 kilowatts of the uh, that the microinverters should max out at, the microinverters continue to generate 1.14 kilowatts. So um, yeah, it's a bit confusing because none of the evidence supports any either of my hypotheses. So if you've got any other ideas, um, please let me know. Um, I did look at the voltages um, measured from the the Shelly app that I'm using to um, monitor the generation of these two systems. And uh, it does show that the voltage gets up to about 251 volts, something in that ballpark. So potentially that is what's happening. But when I did my uh, test of turning off the microinverters and the east-west array, uh, the voltage did drop a little bit by a few degrees, by um, sorry, a few volts, and I didn't see the uh, the Fox um, generation increase. So um, yeah, that's what make, makes me think that potentially that's not what that what's causing that. Uh, so yeah, very confused. Um, any ideas you've got, I'm all ears and um, willing to hear what you have to say. Stop the video. So Editor Tim here, just stepping in briefly to mention that a couple of days after I filmed this, I came up with a new hypothesis, which I now strongly believe is the real reason for the clipping I'm seeing with the string inverter. What I actually think is happening is the inverter is getting hot and in order to prevent itself overheating, it's actually curtailing the output from the inverter. Uh, now, I am running some experiments to see if I can resolve the issue, um, but if I turn out to be correct and I'm able to sol solve it, I will issue another video just to let you know uh, what I found and what I did uh, in order to fix it. But uh, yeah, that's my leading hypothesis uh, at the moment. I don't think it's either of those other two things that I mentioned. Um, but with that said, let's go back to the video and we'll do a roundup. So the last bit of data I would like to show you is from the Enphase app again, showing the individual panel outputs since they were installed. And we installed these a couple of days prior to the 1st of March. So the totals here are gonna be a little bit higher than what you saw in the other chart. But you can see this bottom panel here that does get a little bit of shading first thing in the morning is generating very slightly less, as you'd expect, 125 kilowatt hours compared to 134 kilowatt hours for the other two panels. So a very small uh, decrease based on the shading. Um, but uh, I would expect this to um, affect the string inverter very slightly more. But as I said, the vast majority of the day, it's completely unshaded. So that might account for a small amount of the um, um, uh, extra performance that we're getting from the Enphase array, but not all of it, certainly. So yeah, that's uh, going to be interesting to see how that plays out for the full year. Um, check back later. So there you go. There's the first two months of results from my little experiment. I'm going to come back in a few months to do the six monthly roundup. So if you're not already subscribed and you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. That's it for now. Uh, go check out Green Team One if you're interested in getting a solar install and uh, let them know what I sent you. But thanks very much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.